the cornerstone of replayability and unpredictability in games. But how does it really work? As you might have heard, computers can't generate true randomness. Instead, they use algorithms to produce sequences of numbers that only appear random. The key to this process is a starting value known as a seed. Usually this value is derived from the system's current time, but you can also set it manually. This creates what's known as seeded randomness. But why should you care about this? Seeded randomness is common in roguelike games, especially deck builders, where giving players the option to set the seed allows them to experience the same game conditions as others who use the same seed. Now you might think, why would I want to control the randomness? I want every session to be unique. Which is totally fair, but seeded randomness is really easy to implement and it has some hidden benefits I discovered only after I started working with it, so I wanted to share this discovery that countless developers had the joy of stumbling upon. Hello and welcome back to Alchemy Ship, my name is Andras and today I want to give you a brief explanation on how to do seeded randomness and why I believe it's something every game that has randomly generated content should use, so let's get into it. So what are these benefits? The main one involves saving and loading randomly generated content. Let's look at an example. Suppose your game generates a dungeon with rooms and paths. If the player quits, you have to save the dungeon's layout usually as a complex set of data. But with seeded randomness, all you need to save is the seed and the player's current position, and when the player loads the game, you just regenerate the entire dungeon using the same seed. This eliminates the need for separate generating and loading functions, simplifies your code, and allows you to add even more complexity on top of it, like randomizing room designs, colors, or positions, without increasing the complexity of saving. Beyond this, there are many other situations where seeded randomness is invaluable. For example, if you or a tester encounters a weird bug that only happens under certain conditions, using the same seed makes it much easier to replicate and debug. Seeds can also power stuff like daily challenges, where all you need to do is generate a seed and let the game create a consistent experience for all the players on that day. These are just a few ways you can leverage seeded randomness, even if you're not planning on letting players manually set or share seeds. Now that you've been thoroughly convinced of its potential, let's dive into how to set it up. But before we do that, I would like to thank you for watching this video, and if you're enjoying it, please consider liking and sharing it, it helps this channel grow, and I would really appreciate it. Also feel free to leave any questions or suggestions in the comments down below, I would love to discuss this topic further. Okay, so to set up a seed, you can either generate one based on the current time, or set one manually. Then save this seed and use it consistently throughout the run. Whenever you generate random values using functions like random range or random value, set the seed right before that. However, if you use the same seed without modification, the generator will give you the same result every time. To avoid this, you can modify the seed slightly, like adding the player's current room ID to the seed, or using a seed modifier integer that increases with each random generation. This approach also solves a common issue with normal randomness. Sometimes, multiple objects get the same random number if they're created at the same time, because the system generates the same seed for all of them. With seeded randomness, you control the process and eliminate this problem. I first learned about this when I started working on Game is Full of Bugs, and it has helped me out a ton. If you have the time, please check out the game on Steam, it is linked down below. Now this is just a basic implementation, but it should give you control over how your game handles random number generation. I hope this information helps you see the true potential of seeded randomness, and will let you utilize it to its fullest in the future. Thank you again for taking the time to watch this video, and as always, if you want to stay up to date with my future uploads, hit that subscribe button and I'll catch you up in the next one. Cheers!